today and you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can even ask or think oh I pray that you would have your way and send it down send it down oh God from the top of our head to the sole of my feet Lord I pray that you would have your way somebody needs the victory in their life somebody needs a victory in their life somebody needs a victory in their life and I pray that you would give them victory we release the sound of victory in our homes and our churches we release the sound of victory we release the sound of victory to our bank accounts to our bodies to our families we release
No matter the day, no matter the time, no matter the hour, my God will answer you. My God will answer you. You can pray in the midnight hour. And I'm a living witness that, oh, my God will answer you. You can pray at 4 a.m. in the morning. I'm a living witness. My God will answer you. My God will answer you. Not only will he hear you, but he will come and deliver you. And he'll be with you when you pray. My God, my God will answer you. He's able to meet your need. He's able to answer prayer. I'm so glad we serve the true and living God. Who hears our prayers. He'll hear our pleas. We thank you, Jesus. When we pray, you'll meet our needs when we pray. My God will answer you. My God will answer you. I don't know who that's for tonight, but my God will answer you. My God will answer you. He heal you when you pray and you cry. And my God will answer you. My God will answer you. Victory belongs to you. Joy belongs to you. Peace belongs to you in Jesus' name. Just lift your hands and receive it. Just lift your hands and receive your breakthrough. Lift your hands and receive your miracle today. God's releasing miracles, God's releasing miracles, God's releasing miracles, they're flowing your way. God's releasing miracles, God's releasing miracles, God's releasing miracles, they're flowing your way. God's releasing miracles, God's releasing miracles, God's releasing miracles, they're flowing your way. God's releasing miracles. God's releasing miracles. God's releasing miracles. They're flowing your way. Just lift your hands and receive it now. I'm a living witness. God will show up and make a way somehow. Just believe his word. Stand firm on his promises. Put on the whole armor of God so you can stand against the wiles of the devil. Don't stop praying, don't stop fasting, don't stop seeking, don't stop declaring the word of God over your life and every request. I'm a living witness, he will answer you, he will answer you, he will heal you, he'll heal you, he'll feel you, he will revive you, he will, he will, he will meet your need. I'm a living witness, he will meet your need. He will meet your need. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen, saints. Hallelujah. I'm so excited today. Uh, we have a guest. Uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and call her Prophetess Trina Treen. The Prophetess Trina Washington. She is a renowned organist and has traveled the world playing and singing and doing worship and not just uh, ministering in song, but uh, she is a prophetic voice and a minister of the gospel, a woman of integrity. I've known her now for years and we've met on a divine appointment and I'm so excited and honored to have her with us today. Um, again, her name is Trina Tree and she's gonna be coming in in just a moment in her own way. I'm releasing her to be free. And I just want you guys to receive this, this woman of God is is integritous. Um, she has been a friend and a sister um, and just in some of my most difficult times in my life. And I'm so grateful and honored to have her with us on today. So bear with me as I bring her in. Let's give her a moment. 
Amen, sis. We're just going to turn it over to you to, to let the Lord flow and speak to you. However, I, I, I hear that flow of the song. You keep that going. That's nice. <laughs> Uh, that's real nice. I want to make sure I see everybody. Greetings to everyone. First and foremost, let me pray the Lord to all of you that are on here. You can keep that 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 uh, flow going. It was lovely. I loved it. Um, thank God for this moment, for this day, um, today that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It says, and let the beauty of the Lord also be upon us and establish our our hands on us. Yeah, the work of our hands established. Out. Everything that means is everything that God has his hands on is established. Yeah. So we don't want to worry about what's going on in the world tonight, but I do thank God. I want to thank God for uh, my beautiful sisters. Uh, I've had for over, it's been over a decade now. Yeah. Um, I was up there with the Akron. Was I in Canton, Akron area? Yeah, you were in Akron. I was doing a music workshop and I met her and she has such a glow about her. This is our first time meeting. I had such she has such a glow the meeting and she just she has such a power on her but it was very silent. You know, you have some people that want to be seen and want to be noted as a prophet or a prophetess or a musician or a preacher. She was very humble. And I just said to her, I said, My sister, you have a Judah praise within you and she began to cry and I didn't understand what was going on at that time at that time someone said the sound is in and out so I hope that we have connected that so we praise God for the connection getting back in so I hope y'all can see her and me because she's light skin and I'm a little dark chocolate so there's nothing wrong with the set and I'm, I'm funny too y'all just want to let y'all know I got a little humor to me too praise the Lord so <laughs> she's like and I'm milk chocolate. So if you see me milk chocolate, that is me. Praise the praise you guys. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, um, let me see. I turn myself up a little bit. So hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, but when I met her and I said, there's a Judah praise within you, not knowing that she was pregnant. And she was pregnant with purpose. And how ironic would it be that when her son was born, her son's name was Judah. And he is Judah, and he is giving praise. So you just never know how um, God will bless you, how God will use you, um, how God will connect you. And we have been connected for such a time as this. And even through my good times and my bad times, she has been there. There's a problem now in this society where you got those fair weather friends that will just come only when things are going well in your life. They only want to see you at the top. You know how the kids say you started from the bottom, now they're here. That's exactly what's happening right now. And now I think everybody has been humbled because now we are living in a time where this pandemic has shut everything and everybody off. And I do believe that God is speaking at such a time as this. I've been praying about this for about two or three days now. And um, Stephanie and I have not talked about what we were going to talk about today. So I said, I'm just going to allow the Lord to just speak through me. I don't, like to, I, don't, I don't like to rehearse nothing. I want the Holy Spirit to speak to me as I have been taught. Um, and also, I want to give honor, um, if you don't mind, to my parents, um, my, my bishop, Bishop Donald J. Washington and Lady Shirley Washington, if they just happen to be watching on tonight, of the Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church. Here in Columbus, Ohio, I thank God for both my parents, um, and I thank God for keeping them. We are still ministering even during the pandemic, uh, but we are outside of the church in the parking lot, and everybody's in their cars. Amen. In their cars with the mask on, because we got we got sense, y'all. We got to have a sense of sensibility and wisdom in this season. And going back to what I was saying, I believe that. And I, I, I've been a victim of this. We love social media. And hello to everyone that is coming on here to join my sister Stephanie and I. Hello to everyone. We, God bless you. Um, I believe that, you know, I've, I've been a victim of being on social media and, you know, and uh, playing my little games. Like, I love The Sims. And, uh, you know, I'm really not a big reality TV show person, but I do love 90 Day Fiance. I do love that one. 
okay? But I, and maybe the little housewives, who knows? But hey, I'm human. I'm a PK, but I'm human. Um, but sometimes, if we allow those carnal things to take over some of the time that we should have with the Lord, God to shut that thing down. And I think what has happened with this pandemic is as if God said that is enough. I think that um, well, God is a jealous God. That's not what I think. That's what we know because that's what scripture says. He is a jealous God and there should be no other small G gods before him. And our God could be our money. Our little God can be our job. Our little God could be uh, the little friends that really don't care about you and not covering you. Our little God can be um, just the status quo, who you think you might be to people. Uh, all kind of little Gs, our status could be, I mean, any of those things. And if those things get precedence over the big G, the big God, God will remove that. He is a jealous God. That is what the word says. And I believe at this particular point in time, God has shut the whole entire world down because he is jealous. Because we have stopped taking time out to pray to him. We have um, stopped tithing. Uh, let me let me say this to musicians. Musicians, y'all have been complacent. I was one time in point where I have been complacent to where, okay, I'm not going to practice this song. And I'm not going to pray over this song. Because I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not perfect. I had to grow into who you see as Trina Curry and Trina Washington. It's a process. I'm not perfect. I am imperfectly perfect. We are all perfectly perfect. And I believe that the Lord has shut everything down so we can be right where we need to be, right with God. I mean, shut Bar Louie down. That's my favorite restaurant. Y'all love Bar Louie restaurant. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Down. You know, um, shut our jobs down. Some of us don't have jobs anymore. The people that were worshiping their jobs and their titles that God gave them, but they forgot because that's who God, God gave them those jobs. God gave them a promotion. And, and they forgot the tithe. No, they didn't forget the tithe. They didn't want to. Because they're, they're, they're thing, there were things that were bigger than God. So God shut it down. Now, here we are. And I don't want to use the word forced to pray. Because, you know, God has given us free will. But I do thank God I have this time that we are sheltered in our homes. And let's thank God for where we are. We're in our homes. We are lacking yes. for nothing. Even if you're on disability or unemployment, God is still making ways out of no ways. He said he will supply your every need according to his riches and glory. So now I'm going to say, let me say this to musicians, to preachers, whoever's on here. If you are in ministry at your church and when we go back to church, we cannot go back the way we left it. Musicians, learn your craft. Play in every key. Do not be mediocre and be lazy because God entrusted you to be the Levites of this season. It's not about the money. It's, let me say that again. It's not about the money. My church don't pay me. Franklin County Municipal Court pays me. And now I'm in school for health care, administration, and nursing so that I could go. Because it's a sacrifice. God gave that to me. He entrusted that in me. Musicians, you cannot go back the way it used to be practicing your songs on the way to church on Sunday morning when it's supposed to be done. Can't do it. I used to do it. And my dad's the pastor. And he's a musician. I used to do it. The time when you do rehearse, rehearse the music before rehearsal. Preachers, preach and, and study your word before you get up there and preach your word. Now, I live with my mom and dad. My dad stays in his man cave and he studies and he studies and he studies. Some of my daddy is 74 years young. He's still um, teaching. He doesn't, I mean, he, ta he doesn't take that lightly. He takes it very serious. But I do believe that God is putting us into a point to say, you know what? Enough is enough. Y'all have played with me. Y'all have not said thank you for the new car. You have not said thank you for the job promotion that you was laying on your face crying like, oh, my God, when am I going to get promoted? All these things that God has given you, some of us have taken for granted. And God said, okay, I'm going to show all of y'all something. Everything is shut down. But I do. God, for such a time as this, I believe that everybody that is on here may have known someone who had COVID-19, but didn't get it. Come on, somebody. And God is still protecting you and your household. God is still allowing you to eat day to day to day. And I mean, I'm talking about full meals. I'm not talking about a, you know, little McDonald's. Even if it is McDonald's, God is giving us so much. He's giving us plenty. And we ought to thank God for these things. Look at what's happening on the news. 
Every day we gotta hear about COVID-19 coronavirus. Every day we gotta see a tropical storm. Every day we gotta see number 45 and we pray for him. And you know what? The Lord says we do have to pray for our enemies. And yes, we do have to pray for 45, y'all. And maybe God had it meant for, for that to happen. Everything that's happening right now in our lives is supposed to be happening right at this moment. Everything. It, right now, it's a Jeremiah 29 and 11 moment for all of us. He has a plan for all of us. And even if we go a little left or a little right or a little up or a little down, he's going to make sure that we stay on that, that path. I do honestly believe that. And I really, really hope and pray that everyone that is on here don't take God's blessings for granted, not even in this season. I do also believe, Stephanie, that God has given us a glimpse just a slight glimpse of, of what happens if we miss the mark. Oh. Oh. You remember when the, the pandemic first began and they started shutting down the, the grocery stores and everybody's packing up on on uh, uh, toilet paper and Lysol? I believe that God has given us a little glimpse of, okay, well, you know what? You you know, you dipping and diving and slipping and sliding. Now, you really go, you're going to serve me. You can't serve two masters. You're going to either love one or hate the other. These are not Trina's words. This is the word of the Lord. You can see it for yourself. I believe people have just been kind of teeter-tottering with the Lord. And I believe this is, might be a little, this is nothing compared to what the tribulation will be. And I don't want to be here for that. I, only, I couldn't even imagine. But I remember everybody was scrambling. We get toiletries and water and you know, they, um, cur I mean, some of us are, you know, um, still under curfew. Some here in Ohio, you know, we're under a curfew. They shut the bars down after 10. Praise the Lord for those who would love to get a little drink for the stomach's sake, as the word says. Praise you, God. Shonda, hallelujah. <laughs> they shut them down here in Ohio after 10. Can't get a drink after 10. All right, praise the Lord. But, I <laughs> but it's the truth. Um, but we still thank God. We yet still thank God. Um, even the stimulus check, the people said that they wasn't going, you know, I'm not taking that. I did. Praise God. And guess what? I tied out of it. Praise the Lord. Put the rest of my savings account. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Good. Praise the Lord. God will give you. Look, God only asked y'all for 10%. Y'all, that's not a whole bunch. Put it into your mind. Your, your mind. Okay. Take 10 little cartons. Okay. Take 10 cartons. Take one away. That's 10%. Right there. That one little carton is 10%. What are you left with? Nine cartons. That's how much God gives you. So who are we to tip God? Who are we? Who are we to tip him? Who are we to tip God? That's arrogancy. And I pray that we don't have the spirit of arrogancy when this thing is over. I can't wait to get back up in that church. Well, I'm going to tear it. I'm tearing it up every Sunday anyway. But I know when we get inside the church building, I can't wait to tear it up. I think we, well, I ain't going to mess up my organ. We just got right before the pandemic can't play on it praise the lord hallelujah but i just wanted to to kind of just encourage us and let me see who's on here on tonight um because it really is imperative there's so many people that are contemplating suicide let me give you my testimony y'all and she knows it very well like i said i grew up here in columbus ohio um the first born child to bishop Cheryl, uh, bishop donald and, and first lady charlene i have a younger brother and um it's just he and i and uh, we live a good life, you know, everything was not given to us. You know, everybody thinks that PKs are the most spoiled, the worst kids in the world. Honey, I'm 46, not married, don't have no kids. I guess I must be doing something right. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't doing too bad, okay? But um, went to school, graduated from high school, graduated from Ohio State the first time in, in 1996. Um, you know. My brother and I, are, if you don't know who my brother is, my brother is an amazing musician and a minister. He can preach, too. He plays everything. And um, you, go through those, you go through those times in life to where you get pressure. I'm sharing my testimony with some, somebody needs to hear my testimony tonight. Because everybody's going, hey, Trini, no, 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 you don't know what Trini had to go through. Like all the, the nice glam and lashes and lip gloss and all that you see. There was something that was behind that. Even though my parents have raised me in the best way I know how, my my weakness was relationships. And when I'm talking about, I'm talking about not just my boyfriend relationships, just trusting and not asking God for discernment. And I know someone needs to hear this because you know what, everybody that's encircled around you, you need to check your circle. Y'all need to, even in this pandemic, y'all need to check your circle. Because if they weren't with you from the bottom and they here with you, you need to cut them off. There's some disconnections that need to happen. 
and don't feel bad about them. Look, I've had some relationships. I was even married before. Got married at 27. Let me tell you something. When you pray and ask God, make sure you are specific on asking God or what it is that you I ask God for a husband. Guess what? That's exactly what I got. A husband. I was a specific <laughs> what I wanted in a husband. I said, Lord, I'm supposed to like a husband. I think I'm going 27. I got a husband. And we were there for 61 days. God bless. Because we were unequally yoked. And that was one testimony because I didn't wait on God. When God has something for you, it's you know what it is. So be specific about what you're praying about. Number two, I remember that I dated this one guy and I ended up having a nervous breakdown because he had worked me so hard and um, it was just a mess. And I wrote this in my book, uh, Memory of Daughter. I'm getting ready to uh, reissue that. Um, about, um, everything that I have gone through from, you know, dealing with being a PK and really I enjoy my life as being a PK as a minister for me uh, and living a normal life. But even in the midst of some, some people, some guys that I met in my life and my former life, uh, or my past life have hurt me to the point of no return. And then I turned to alcohol and sleeping pills. And I said, okay, you know, I never knew about that until I wrote my book and they were just shocked because they didn't know. Yeah, this is me. Trina, Trina, Trina Washington. And I wasn't addicted to it because I kept drinking it and I kept taking them to get to sleep because I love the feeling of just feeling drowsy and just, you know, not knowing that the combination of the two were just, wow. Before I got into pharmacology and microbiology and all the things that I have to know now in healthcare, I'm like, oh my God. You know, I had to kill myself. But God said, no. Let me go way back from the very, very beginning. When I was born, I swallowed amniotic fluid. And uh, for, for those who are mothers, um, you know that there is uh, you know, the uh, amniotic fluid that is within your sac, and of course it comes out, that's when your water breaks. Well, guess what? When I was coming out of my mother's womb, I happened to aspirate that, and it drowned my lungs a little bit. So I was only supposed to live for 24 hours. Uh, there was a 24-hour um, time limit for me to live. And if I passed that 24-hour uh, time period, then it said 90%, I'm sorry, 80%, I would be in a vegetative state. I would be uh, mentally retarded. I wouldn't be able to speak. I wouldn't be able to hear. I wouldn't be able to do any of those things. I, my father, who was the minister of music at the time of the church that he is now pastoring, he said, I'll take the remaining 20% with Jesus. And here I am today. I knew if the enemy was trying to kill me out of my mother's womb 46 years ago, there was a purpose for my life. Even some men that were trying to come into my life, trying to ruin me, make me have a nervous breakdown. It's so, okay, you know, there's a, there's a place called Hoover Dam out here. And, uh, it became a place of woe. It was a place of peace at one point where I just go and run. And, you know, I like to, you know, walk and run. It became because, yeah, you don't have anything else to live for. You don't have, you don't have nothing. The devil can speak these things in your ear. And I remember sitting in my car contemplating suicide after that last relationship that I was in. And believe it or not, um, a lot of people know Pastor Daryl Cherry, who has just passed uh, about maybe a month or two ago. And he was here on Facebook. He happened to call me that day. And I cried. I said, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I, just, I do everything I'm supposed to do. I play for the church. I keep, you know, I keep singing. And I keep praying. And I keep doing this. And all these people just keep hurting me and taking me and doing all these things. God, who has now transitioned to be on with the Lord, spoke a rain of word into me. And I promise I say I ain't going to cry because I'm going to spend too much time putting these eyelashes on tonight. But to God be the glory <laughs> for all things that he has done. That man spoke life unto me in such a way to say, Trina, there is so much purpose in your life. And that's what I'm saying to someone that's watching today. There's so much purpose in your life. Even when you say, I can't do it. The word of God says, and this is my model, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. And I'm sitting here right here today. I'm so grateful to God. So grateful to God that I've had a chance to meet Stephanie. I'm so grateful to God that I've happened to meet the Clark sisters. And not only meet the Clark sisters, be mentored by Dorinda Grace. She took me under her wings. And of course, meeting the ever-popular Elbernita Twinkie Clark, who also took me up under her wings. 
And believe it or not, you just never know. It was Jackie Clark Chisholm was the one who prophesied into my life maybe six or seven years ago. Honey, have you ever thought about being a nurse or even going into health care? I said, no, ma'am. She said, honey, I think you need to look into that. When I told her I was in nursing school and health care, she cried. She absolutely cried. You just don't know. You have no idea. Those are, those are the I cans. I can do all things. Oh, another thing. Of being a musician and then one day being the, the, the head of somebody's hospital or somebody's clinic. Because trust me, I'm going to make a difference in someone's life in health care. Because that's ministry too. So whatever it is that you have in your life, know there is purpose. There is purpose even in the pain that you might be going through right now. I'm a living witness to that. You are looking at a survivor. You are looking at someone that the devil was trying to take out at birth. You are looking at someone that was trying to kill themselves, not once, not twice, but three times. I forgot to tell you the one time that I took uh, 30, Tylenol 3, 30, y'all, 30, Tylenol 3s, and was waiting to die. And God just allowed me just to sleep it off for two days. I slept for two days. Two, two days. But on the third day, I got up. My God. I got up. Every time I tried to kill myself, it wouldn't happen. And even what we speak says death and life are in the power of the tongue. God was, no, no, I'm not going to let you know. That's, that's, too, that's too easy. No, no, no. There's some things I need for you to do. There are some things that God has each of you to do. What is it that you need from the Lord? If you want to go back to school, I'm 46. If I can do it, you can. God will give you the money to go to school. Open up that business. Somebody needs to open up that business. Go to that um, bank and go in faith and pray and say, I thank you, Lord, for this small business loan that I'm about to have. Somebody need to open up a boutique. Praise the Lord. Whoever you are on here tonight, open up that boutique. Bless some people in your church with some clothes. Show these young women how to dress so they won't be looking like the real housewives of Atlanta looking all hoochified. Amen. No, we ain't doing that in this season. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look, my mother's a southern woman. I'm a, I'm a southern midwestern girl, okay? <laughs> girl with southern ways. I'm tired of that. Now, I'm going to tell you that. I love hair. Now, I will go get me some real housewives hair, but I ain't going to look. You know, I'm tired of that. I'm, amen. Come on. Amen. Lights and walls. Hallelujah. I am tired of that. Showing all the cleavage and the boom boom and the doom doom. Yeah, I'm tired of that. Praise the Lord. Ladies, if you're looking for a husband, let him find you. Where am I going with this? Well, hey, it said a man that finded a wife. And it said a woman that finded the husband. See, that's now, not about to go somewhere else. She that seeking, he that find it. Some of y'all are chasing. Ladies, if you're on here and you're looking for that husband, let him find you. Let me tell you, I am taken. I'm not married just yet, but it's coming. And I know he's the one. Why? Because I prayed and asked God specifically this time. And ask the Lord, Lord, A, B, C, D, E, I, C, H, I, Z, Z, L, M, D. I'm not going to tell you what I prayed for. I ain't going to do like Sierra did and give you the prayer that I prayed to get my husband. That's nice for Sierra. God bless her. But that was a conversation between me and God. Sometimes your prayers need to be a conversation between you and the Lord only. And just like when I post on my page, certain blessings that you get don't always need to be told. Because everybody is not going to be happy for you. Now, the ones that you love and the ones that respect you and the ones that have been there with you, share it with them. Because, honey, let me tell you, you got blessing blockers and destiny destroyers in your life. And everything that you post on Facebook, you got somebody that's uh, speaking against it. If you got a new car or you got a new job or whatever the case may be that you've been praying about and you've been fasting, you've been crying and your eyelashes falling off because you cried and you cried some more. Lord, I need, I need thee, I need thee, oh Lord. And, got it. and then you're telling everybody, let the Lord introduce it or present it to everybody. Just like my love life is private. Amen. As a matter of fact, everybody knows who he is. He's hidden in plain sight. Y'all just don't know who it is. Praise him. Yeah. Uh, praise God. I felt, I felt something real quick. Yeah, thank you, Lord, for that blessing. But anyway, yes. <laughs> Y'all don't know. Trust me, I've been through a lot. And, uh, and, but I thank God. And let me say this. If you are holding a grudge right now against somebody that has said something to you or has done something to you, forgive them right now, today. The only reason why, I don't know who I'm talking to today. The 
the only reason why you're not being black is because you still hold on that grudge. You still hold on to it. Now the word says, and if I regard iniquity in my heart, my prayers are not going to be heard. I'm paraphrasing it so you can understand. It. In other words, if you're regard, uh, if you're holding in grudges, sin, unforgiven sin, unspoken sin, you haven't forgave anyone, and then you pray to God and you ask Him for some things, even though the Bible says to light yourself unto Him and He'll give you the desires of the heart, He's not going to give you the desires of your heart. Now, when you have, um, you're not forgiven someone, or you haven't even forgiven yourself on some things. My today, free. You need to be free of some of those things today. You want to see God work? You need to work your faith and let go of those things. Let go and let God. Period. I mean, what does Romans eight thirty one say? This says, "What what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us?" I don't care. You're going to have people that's not going to like you. You got people right here, right now, watching me, not saying anything, mad, just because I'm on here. Hi. How y'all doing? I'm living my best life. <laughs> Lashes and all. Blink, blink, blink. That's what you got to do with your enemies. Praise him. Looking <laughs> nice at 46. Praise him. Looking 26. Come on, somebody. I do not look like what I've been through. And I'm tired of some people saying, I don't look like what I've been through. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. Sin will age you, y'all. Some sin will age you. Sin will age some of y'all. I'm not allowing sin to age me. No, I know I ain't gonna look, you know, young forever. And I know they say black don't crack, but sin will make you crack. <laughs> it will. It will. I said, yes, it will. Yeah, man. That's funny. I have seen some folk, and they were just as pretty, but they ugly on the inside, and they just. And, and they started getting funky, just funky attitude, funky breath. But everything just became funky about them. Just, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, something make you smell a certain way. Make you look a certain kind of way. Lord, I'm telling y'all. Grandmama used to say that. Make you stink. Just look like you stank. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> say that too. While we on that point, let me talk to the ladies real quick. <clears throat> While I was talking about the dress. Karen Clark's here, First Lady Karen Clark. She was like, you know, you got some of the ladies that are kind of, you know, uh, healthy now. I'm, I'm a little, I'm getting that midlife spread. I'm liking it a little bit, you know, because I've been skinny all my life. So I'm like, oh, I got a little boom, boom. But you don't want to, you know, I hey, Now, I wear, I do not have a problem wearing space. So it can, I have the nice form fitting, so everything is nice. And, you know, and I do work out. Some of y'all need to wear some spanks and some form fitters, ladies. So everything will be nice and perfect. I am so tired. I'm trying to help somebody else. I hope this helps somebody else. And this is not prophetic. This is not a prophetic word. This is to help somebody else. Would you please, ma'am, ladies, if you're gonna wear a form-fitting dress, put some spanks on. Cause some of y'all look like y'all stank. That's what that's what Karen Clark said. She said some of y'all look like y'all stank. Put some spanks on and make sure them spanks is clean. Amen. Make sure your dress is clean. And we're going to be presentable women of God to be presentable. Praise the Lord. My mama taught me this. We thank God for Lady Cheryl Washington. Hey, you don't know who you're going to run into when you go to the supermarket. I mean, you ain't got to be all glammed up or whatnot. But make sure I'm trying to help somebody. You want a husband? Well, honey, you have to show yourself presentable. When he's finding you, you can't be looking like you staying. Teach him, mother. Teach him, mother. Teach him, mother. I look like you stank. Praise the Lord. Every time I seen Stephanie, Stephanie was just as beautiful, beautiful as ever. Just the way she looking right now is the way I saw her. Put them things up. Tie them down. Strap them down. Strap them up. You know, fit them up. Whatever you need to, to do, praise the Lord. And while you strapping yourself on the outside, make sure that you're cleansing yourself on the inside spiritually while you're doing all that fixing. Because it is, makes no difference. It makes no sense for you to be looking good and horrible on the inside. Praise the Lord. We need more Deborahs and less Delilahs in this season. Let me say that one more time. We need more Deborahs or Deborahs in this season instead of Delilahs. Let me emphasize one more time. We need more Deborahs, leaders, than Delilahs, which are seducers. Now, see, Delilah know the word, too, y'all. Delilah can fix herself up and look so fine, know the word. And know it, everything, be in the choir, be the leader, the praise and worship leader. I am not talking to somebody today, be the praise and worship leader, and come, come to Sunday school, Bible, and
and knows how to dress and knows how to seduce that very one I might be preaching or might seduce the very one that's being the minister of music. Delilah ain't too far off from Jezebel because they're both controlling spirits. I don't know why I'm on this point right now. I guess somebody need to hear this flow, today. Flow, flow, flow. Really? <laughs> Really, I mean, really, Delilah ain't too far from Jezebel. See, people get Jezebel and Delilah mixed up. Del Jezebel was not the, the whore. Delilah was. Jezebel was the one that controlled the leadership. That's why most of the time when Jezebel spirits come up in uh, the church, they always attack the leader. And don't think that Jezebel comes in the form in a female. It can be in the form of a male, just like the spirit of Ahab. Ahab was a weak man. Ladies, you don't need a weak man. You do not need an Ahab in your life. Say so, say so. <laughs> you don't need to be Jezebel either. If you're Jezebel and you got an Ahab, well, there you go. I'm preaching. Lord, y'all ain't got me preaching on here. Lord, have mercy. Jezebel was the one that controlled everything. It had to be her way. She told people and forced people to worship Baal. They were devil worshiping Baal worshiping B-A-A-L. Look it up. I think it's in Judges. Uh, whew. My, I ain't going to get into all that, but y'all look at this in the book of Judges. Yes. And what happened to Jezebel, her demise. She got ate up by dogs. Delilah, she was a whore. She knew, she used what she had to get what she wanted. And she did. You got those spirits still running rampant, still in the church. And even now that we're outside of the church, watch your, your eye gate and your ear gates. Because even the stuff that we see on TV can manifest within us as well. All these reality TV shows, be careful. They're entertaining. They really are all entertaining, but we got to be careful in this season what's in our eye gate and our ear gate. That's why I, I turn my TV off because even when you're asleep, one thing that I've learned being in healthcare now, your subconscious mind is going on 24 seven. So even when you're asleep and your TV is still on, Everything that is in your mind that's still going in your subconscious actually is going in your medulla oblongata. That's in the back. I'm giving you a little anatomy history lesson here, okay? Your uh, medulla oblongata, okay? That's the back of your head, the back of your uh, brain. It's still working. So if you wonder why you got up in the morning and I feel like me, 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 because the road word was on last night. Wally Coyote and me, 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 me. Why am I thinking about that? Because... <laughs> brain was still working. Put some word on at night. Have the Bible speak to you all night. Have that word. Since that word that I have hit in my heart that I might not sin against it. I had that going on. Maybe sometimes I love music, obviously, but sometimes I have that nice um, music that's playing. And then sometimes when I really, really, really have, your, um, have your Bible app speak all night. So that word will be within you all day. Lord, I done went from here to there. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Let me take a break for just a moment. Y'all enjoying this? I'm doing it myself. Look, Stephanie, this, this is, is me excellent. all day, every day. This is me all day, every day. Let me see who's Let me see who's on here. I think Chef Wendell's on here. That's my best friend. How you doing, darling? My sister Sharia is on here. I'm sorry. I just I done went in and forgot to say hello to everybody. The kid is on here, and Sharon, and who else is on here? Praise the Lord. Him. Somebody, oh, you know, yes. Somebody said, him. Honey, him's never done. You know, I'm a Baptist girl. I'm like, Father, I stretch. Hey, Eva Bashando, my hand. Oh, oh, yeah, don't work. The charge to keep, I have a God to glorify. Uh, Chuck, yeah, the meter hymns. Bring them back, musicians, if you're in here. Choir directors, bring those back. Please. Because some of the stuff on the radio, I don't know, they singing about themselves or. <laughs> hey, I'm just. Because I don't hear Jesus in the music. Just because it's on, on the gospel station, don't mean it's gospel. But I'm here. Anything being said about Jesus Christ, I'm going to question it. You know, I now I love Jonathan McRills. I got to put my homie out there. Um, everything that I hear him speak, he's just, I mean, he is a true psalmist. And if we're going to be intentional about what we're doing uh, ministry-wise, we want to make our message clear. If you have people that are Satanists, they're going to make their point clear, who they serve. If, uh, if they are uh, atheists, they're going to make their point clear. We, as men and women of God, we need to make our points clear. We should not be ashamed. 
we should not be ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We got to make it clear. It seems like we're the only ones that are afraid to stand up for someone. Now, I actually go to work, and she's a wicked. But she don't bother me because she knows I've actually had dinner with her. But she knows who I serve, and she has questions. She's agnostic, so she questions the existence of God. So I've had a conversation, and, you know, she still wears a little pentagram, you know, uh, necklace. That's, that's cute. That's nice. That's what you believe. But I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me, you know, over 2,000 years ago, and showed her scripture and didn't have a problem. And guess what? She respected it. Wonder why? She couldn't argue with me because every question she had, I had an answer for it. got to have that word. I'm not saying you got to be an eschatological Bible expositor. But ladies and gentlemen, do not be ashamed. Because if we are ashamed of him, he's going to be ashamed of us. It seems like we're the only ones that just kind of curl up and afraid to say anything. Speak up and tell the folks, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that he lives within me. I believe that he set my soul free. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe. Yes. <laughs> I'm right there. I believe. And that's what you got to tell yourself. This pandemic will pass, y'all. It will pass. And I'm, I'm going to see who's on here. I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling something. Chef Wendell. Now I know him from Atlanta. And we've met before. Um, <laughs> Wendell Kelly. Linda, let me say this because I'm gonna be obedient to the Holy Spirit. I could have called. I'm not. I'm not gonna call that. Chef Wendell Kelly, who I call my bestie. You need to make an investment. I don't know what it is. And I know we haven't talked in a while. There's an investment that you're afraid to make, and I don't know exactly what that investment is. Don't be afraid to put that investment into whatever it is that your heart is desiring. January person just came on here. She's from. out no more singles you need to come out with at least six songs or more that's an ep or longer she just came in the room i just felt i just saw her come in january i love you honey Woo. you need to come you need to make sure january that you are praying about the people that are writing the songs for you that they're just not writing songs just to be writing them because your voice is powerful. I played for you before, many, many times when I was in Roanoke, honey. You pray and ask God to send you the right songwriters, and you're even a prolific songwriter yourself. But baby, it's time for you to come out with six songs or more. Put it out. There's somebody that's going to invest in you. Don't worry about the money. That'll come. Don't worry about the exposure. That'll come, too. People know who you are. There's some people that you'll never, ever see. That you're touching. She sounds a lot like Terrilyn Ramsey, Stephanie. Uh, January Harrison. Wow. She put you in the mind of Terrilyn Ramsey. Put it out, baby girl. I know I haven't spoke to you in a long time since I left Rono, but it's time for you to put it out. Her voice is a powerhouse. But yeah, let me go back to window. There's an investment. I don't know what it is, but go for it. I saw my brother Marvin Miller Jr. come out. We thank God for your healing. I've known Marvin Miller Jr. since we were kids. You might as well say that's my little brother. And I thank God for your healing. He is a member of Men of God's Heart. If you've ever heard of the group, uh, Stellar uh, nominee um, group, Men of God's Heart. And I'm thanking God for all of your hospital bills being paid. Some of the things, all of those in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for insurance and assurance in jesus christ my god thank you lord Whew. thank you jesus who else is on here my god thank you lord shannon etheridge i'm not shannon, shannon are you a minister do you do you evangelize do you teach in your church you know the, the word of god says and he gave some prophets some teachers have you ever taught, Shannon? I'm not sure if you ever taught anything, but you want to pray about that? Seems like you got a wonderful teaching spirit that might really help someone. Like maybe Sunday school. I'm not sure if you teach in Sunday school. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. My God. See, some people operate outside of their gifts. 
and that that becomes really kind of horrible that's why you got some of these fake products p-r-o-f-i-t and haven't heard from the lord you got to be very careful with that very 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 careful or who you, who you allow a spirit you work at the hospital are you teaching someone you still got a teaching are you are you educating someone now i'm in healthcare. you know you can teach in that area maybe you can take a certification course and teach it to someone there's a teacher in you it is trina i, I gotta say you you have I have to bear witness with that. It's, it, it's most definitely, I would say, a teaching. And also, I would also go as far as say even prophetic is over her life, too. So you're, you're on it, sis. Wow. Praise God. Can I talk about it? You know what, sometimes. Miss Trina? Yeah. I, I want to I wanna, uh, prophesy. And if you have anything for this person, go for it, sis. Um, LaShonda Grant, I just heard the Spirit of the Lord say, uh, the the last three months, you have been praying and asking God for a specific request. And I hear the Lord say, you are going to see some miracles and manifestation within the next three weeks. Mm. And that's what I hear from yeah. Shonda Grant. Shonda Grant. Okay. By the way, everybody that's on here tonight, I have my, um, I have a journal and I write people's names down. So I hope that you don't mind me writing down your names because I'm going to pray for everybody. I am an intercessor. I do believe in praying for people and whatever the uh, the requests are, I pray. I'm just going to ask God to bless you in every area. This, who is that man of God that you mentioned? Uh, you prophesied in an investment. Who was his uh, name? Wendell Kelly. Wendell Kelly. Is he? I, need, I need to piggyback. I need to piggyback off of what Trina said. Uh, there's some investments, and I and I'm I'm gonna tell you what I hear the Lord say. I'm also seeing. Um, some real estate, some property that you're going to be able to get pennies on the dollar. Man of God, I don't know if you have a nonprofit or whatever this is, but I hear the Lord say he's going to make the crooked places straight and provide everything you need for what's in your heart to do. You want to help people. You, you want to do stuff for the kingdom for real. Because a lot of times folks are like, oh yeah, I want to I want to represent, but you, it's really in your heart to do more. So I hear the Lord say it's a building that you're going to get pennies on the dollar. It relates to a, a nonprofit that God, I hear the Lord say he's going to give you the strategy, the team, and the resources that you need to, to fulfill and to take you to the next level of your destiny. Because he got, I hear the Lord say he's got to get you to a certain place by a certain time. Because, listen, y'all, time is winding up. And I hear the Lord say he's got to get you to a certain place at a certain time because there are souls connected to what things that you want to do for the kingdom. Their souls connected to that. And I hear the Lord say he's going, to, he's going to do it. And as a matter of fact, I hear the Spirit of the Lord say there's there's been a lot of hail that's been sent against you. I hear the Lord say it's given me the, the last four or five months a lot of attacks, uh, a, lot of, uh, a, lot of, a lot of plans and plots of the enemy. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord say that no weapon that's been formed against you shall prosper. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord say He's going to do it for you. He's going to fight your battles for you. So I hear the Lord say, you don't have to worry about stuff beyond uh, your control. I hear the Lord say, put a praise on it because he's getting ready to manifest your miracle. And that's what I hear the spirit of the Lord say for you, man of God. I'm writing people's names down as I see them, if you don't mind. Lindo. Oh, yes. I got, one, I got one word for you, sir. Cater up. Okay, I'm going to move on now. Kayla. I see him. I want to make sure I got everybody's name on here. Thea. Pray for Thea. Burts. Okay, yes. Everything should be made well in your home, Thea. I pray for peace that surpasses all understanding in your home. I pray for all things to be well in your home. I'm writing your name down. See, these are things that we should do as men and women of God. We should cover one another. Now, if you can't pray, you can't cover somebody, don't do it. Amen. Make sure that your heart is pure because let me tell you something. I have to shut myself completely off. And my mom is a prayer warrior. Sometimes mom, and my, so is my father. And sometimes we'll go and write names down and just cover and pray and anoint ourselves and shut the TV off and everything. We believe in the power of prayer. Tyron. Um, Trina, Trina, 
can I prophesy this? Uh, this is for your mother and your father, Bishop and Lady Washington. I hear the Lord say he's ready to shut down the Jezebels in that church that have been fighting them in the spirit. I hear the spirit of the Lord say that enough is enough. And he's getting ready to he's getting ready to shut down these opposing spirits because your mother and your father do kingdom work in the very they're very serious about the people of God. They're very serious about, I hear the Lord say, walking in integrity. And I hear the Lord say, they don't even have to fight this battle. I hear the Lord say, he's getting ready to silence the enemies and silence every Jezebel spirit. It's like, I don't listen. I don't know. Listen, Trent, we don't talk, so I don't know what's going on. But I hear the Lord say, there's been some opposing spirits, like almost like witchcraft prayers, like prayers sent against your, your, your father and your mother. But I hear the spirit of the Lord say that no weapon has been formed in the church and his They'll legacy prosper. will begin to prosper. And I hear the Lord say he is in his heart because he wants to leave a legacy and do things right. And I hear the Lord say he's going to meet and fulfill every promise. There's some things that God has promised him. And I hear the Lord say longevity of life is his portion. And I hear the spirit of the Lord say that he's going to live to see the legacy Fulfill out God. just like it's in his, in, in his heart for him to see fulfilled for the church. I received that for them. I received that for because let me tell you something. My parents got the minds of thirty year olds. They they up in age and you know, oh my God, Jesus, yeah, my God, I'll tell them. I Lord, hear the Lord say, Trina, too, as it relates to your brother, there is a promotion that's coming for him, and I hear the Lord say, there's going to be some virtual opportunities that is going to bring him great wealth. And it's like, I'll also see not just virtual opportunities, but even opportunities uh, like him doing music for movies and TV shows. Uh, there's going to be some opportunities that's going to be presented. And I hear the Lord say they're going to be very lucrative. Very lucrative for him is what I hear the Lord say. So please tell your brother. That's the word of the Lord. I, let me share this with you. He was at uh, he the house yesterday uh, talking about some things he was going to be doing musically and some doors were opening up for him that he's not yet talking about. You're on point. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, That's you are. Body. Yeah, it is. I see you, Marie Williams. And Trina, I hear the Lord say for you, Trina, promotion's coming for you. Thank you, Jesus. Because I need one in the name Delayed, of Jesus. But not denied. There's some promises that God's spoken over your life that you still haven't seen manifest. And I hear the Lord say, there's not one promise that God has promised you that he's not going to fulfill concerning your life. The Lord said, you deserve to be happy. You deserve to be happy. Happiness. Because you've sacrificed you, a lot. Amen. Even before yourself. And I hear the Lord say, your sacrifices have not been in vain. As a matter of fact, I hear the Lord say that he has already begun to release miracle angels on your behalf, breakthrough angels, and warring angels on your behalf. I, it's like I, I, I see God putting a hedge of protection around you because you go in the spirit realm and you pray for many. You pray for others. And you pull down strongholds for others. And I hear the Lord say, you're going to see the fruit of your labor and of your prayers and of your ministry, your labor's not in vain. That's what I hear. I'm trying to be good. I really am. <laughs> no, 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 I received that. I do receive that because everybody, and I said, I saw Dominic Carter in here. I think I saw Dominic Carter in here. Yes, I did. And I'm just, uh, everybody's saying hello. I received those words as I'm writing all of your names down. Roberta wanted us to pray for her sister, Don Donalyn White. And we shall, and we shall receive healing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let me prophesy right. to one more person. Don, Don Carter, let me prophesy to you. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say that for Don Marie Carter, that the purpose, the purposes of God are going to fully manifest in your life. The Lord said, you've got seed in the ground. you got seed of finances in the ground. you got seed of faithfulness in the ground. you got seeds of integrity in the ground. You have seeds of holiness in the ground. There's so much seed that both you and your husband have in the ground. And I hear the Lord say those seeds are going to manifest. Not just even monetarily, but even as it relates to the favor and the blessings 
the Lord said, there, there's certain blessings that you need to have over the next. These blessings are going to manifest because of all the seed that you have in the ground. And I hear the Lord say, your prayers are not in vain. Your labor is not in vain. Your intercession is not in vain. Your sacrifice is not in vain. God said he's going to reward you because you and your husband have diligently sought the Lord. And you're going to see miracles manifest in your life. Jesus. Go ahead, sis. I'm passing the ball. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, oh. Marie wanted us to pray for even more of the Holy Spirit in for my spiritual eyes to be open. You know what? Um, I think I got her name on here. Marie Williams. Let me put that on here. Marie, I know what it's like. I'm writing your name down. I know what it's like to be one that cannot see when you need to see. If that makes sense. Everybody has level the, uh, levels of discernment. Um, but some may be a little stronger than others. Like my mom is, my mom can look at a person and she be like, uh-uh, no, no. She can tell. I have to, I can't tell right away. I have to pray. So when I'm praying for you, um, Sister Marie, pray and ask God to open up your eyes so that at that moment that you can see, I still pray and ask God because sometimes I don't see things. I feel their spirit. I get it in my chest. Like if they have a very ominous spirit or it's something is not right, I feel it in my chest. It starts caving up. I pray that God gives you wisdom to open up your eyes or even make you have some type of feeling if they are for you or against you. I'm praying for disconnections from people that are holding everyone down. Some of us are having a difficult time uh, letting go. I saw my sister Cherie on here, and I definitely want to put her down. Cherie Stephanie is a, um, my sister in uh, the Bay Area in California, and um, she's on here as Cherie Sojourner, like Sojourner Truth. And um, she has been dealing with a situation that she and I know about. So can I, can I prophesy? Can I prophesy to her? Go right I, ahead. I don't there know you. Her. I don't know what's going on, but I'm gonna tell you what I hear. The Lord said, "You said her name is Cherie." Sheree. Yep, she's on there. Sheree, Sheree. she's on there. Sheree. Let me yep. let me release this word to you. Uh, the Lord says the enemy these last five months. And I hear the Lord say the enemy has been trying to throw every single dart, every single attack, every single thing uh, that he can get you uh, to throw at you because he's trying to get you to give up. But I hear the Lord say, you are strong. And I hear the Lord say, you 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 are resilient. Like you, you it's like you you take a little, like they say, a little bit, but you keep on ticking. You keep on moving. You keep on, you keep on pressing through. You keep on praising through. You keep on worshiping through. And I hear the Lord say, you are getting ready to come to the other side of this. As a matter of fact, the Lord is giving me, within the next five weeks, there's going to be a sh dramatic shift, change, and turnaround for your good for your good in your favor and i hear the lord say that your next is now delayed but not denied it's so much in you i see the prophetic in you i don't know if you prophesy i don't know if you dream but the prophetic is over your life and it's like i see it's like you're in a season of birthing god is birthing out the next place in the spirit realm that you're supposed to get to. That's why the pressure's been great. If you think about olives, in order to get olive oil, you have to add, apply pressure to the olives to burst the oil out. And I hear the thing, you and your anointing to take you to the next level because even you going through this test and trial, other people's deliverance are wrapped up into you coming into your next place. That's why the enemy's been trying to stop you because other souls and other people are connected to you getting to your next place of promise and victory. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord say that there's no weapon that's been formed against you that shall or will be able to prosper. The Lord said you're going to come out of this thing stronger, better, and victorious with more wisdom and even more discernment. And it's, it's, you've been facing witchcraft attacks. There's been witchcraft prayers that have been sent to get you. It's like trying to get you to abort your 
your destiny, trying to get you to a, a board, your next place of purpose, and trying to get you to avoid your posture. Your posture has been a posture of praise. Your posture has been a posture of worship. Your posture has been a, a, a posture of trust. You've been trusting God in the midst of all hell breaking loose against you. And I hear the Lord say, your trust in this season has been a seed for you. You are getting ready to manifest into your next phase of destiny. As a matter of fact, I hear the Lord say that a fresh batch of warring angels has already been released in the spirit realm on your behalf to assist you in this battle. You are going to come out better. The Lord said, you are a deliverer. Listen, there's some people who are called to be deliverers of nations, deliver deliverers of people, certain challenges. Are a Many are called, but you are chosen. God has chosen you for such a time as this. For such a time as this. The Lord said, You're coming out. Hold right. on. Keep praising, keep fighting, keep praying. And I hear the Lord say that the best is yet to come for you. Stephanie, if I may say, um, I talk to her a lot. You were on it. She and I have never met in person, yet we have been the best of friends for five, six years. And you know what? We met on a forum just like this on Periscope. I was actually speaking and, and speaking into someone's life that was trying to commit suicide, who was contemplating suicide. And that's how we met on Periscope. We have never met face to face. But what you are saying to me, to her, because I know I have never spoken of her to you. No, no. I don't even know who she is. <laughs> yeah. Thing that you have said is on point. She just said it was on point. She's been dealing with a situation for a whole year, over a year, that will, will not let her go. Somebody that's just been messing with her and her family, and she's been calling. I know she really don't mind. She's been calling the police trying to deal with this crazy person that she tried to help, and they keep stalking her, and, and, and they keep pushing the court date back, and, and so what you're saying is right on point. I mean, a demon out of the pits of hell trying to trying to get at her, and, and it's a female. So I know when you said Jessica, she's protected. She's covered in blood. I'm just letting y'all know this is this. You know, one thing <laughs> the Lord is amazing when He does things to people that are called. But many are called, but few are chosen, and she's chosen. God has chosen me. When even when I'm like, Nah, Lord, not me. No, not I. But that was right on point. Sister Cherie, Cherie Howard is her name. We call her Cherie Sojourner, but she's a very quiet spirit. But a fiery one at that. She has a lot of word in her. And she doesn't say too much, but when she does, and when she opens up her mouth to pray, it is amazing. There are some things that that woman has spoken into me, and I'm like, wow. Okay, yeah, thank you, Lord. And I mean, she's a powerful prayer warrior. Powerful. Oh, God. God. So God be all the glory. And I just, I, and I know her personally. She's got beautiful children and, you know, and things of that nature. I'm just like, wow. And thank you for all the people. I, I see Marshawn. Uh, hello, sweetheart. I love you. I think I've seen Joe Moorhead. These are some Columbus people that are coming in. And if you're just coming in, we're sharing words of encouragement, words of prophetic anointing, more from Stephanie than me, because y'all know <laughs> me. If I flow, I flow. You've been flowing all night. You've been flowing all night with the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. All night you've been flowing. I am grateful. I I got these people's names down. You know, I got the and Sh Shannon keeps popping up. And wait a minute, Anika Leffords, do I see you, Anika? Anika, Anika is a wonderful musician. She's from Columbus. She lives in Cleveland. I Can I prophesy to her too? Please do, because I'll get ready to get her. Go yeah, ahead. It's, it's Anika. Anika. Anika, let me prophesy. I hear the Lord say, um, God is shifting you in this season, and he is shifting your sound. God is getting ready to elevate your worship and elevate your sound. You're getting ready to play in some realms that you've never played in before. And like these realms that you guys get ready to release from, your, from you, uh, it's getting ready to unlock healing miracle signs and wonders like you like you've never seen before it's like when you just release this worship people are going to testify of miracles after miracles after miracles after miracles 
And as a matter of fact, the Lord is getting ready to give you some songs. Some of these songs are going to come in your dreams. You're going to have to wake up and just sing a little song, the melody. And it's, it's like God's going to download some, the sound of heaven. I'm not saying or suggesting that you already don't have the sound. I'm saying God is getting ready to give you more. God's getting ready to give you more. And there's been some stuff you face in your life that uh, a lot of folks would have lost. But you, like, worship has been your posture. Faithfulness has been your posture. Like, you stood and you held on to God even when it didn't make sense. And the Lord said he's committed to reward your faithfulness. You've been faithful. You've been faithful to a lot of things. You And I, I don't know you, but I hear the Lord say, all you want to do is just help people. You want to see soul saved. And I hear the Lord say, he's getting ready to give you the desires of your heart. There's some desires. I hear the Lord say some things you haven't told nobody. And God is getting ready to fulfill every promise and every word of prophecy that's been spoken over your life that he's promised you. And that's what I hear. I'm sorry. Says, Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Anika, I only have two words for you, sweetheart. Come home. Come home, honey. Moving on. I see my, my uh, work. Miss Christine Fritzinger Gregory, we call her Mommy Fritz. And I just wanted just to say thank you, Mom Christine, for being such a wonderful woman to me. She, we worked together at Franklin County Municipal Court. And everybody doesn't have your bag at work, but she does. So I want to give a shout out to her. Um, she is a beautiful woman. She knows the Lord, um, her and her husband. And since she just happened to pop on here, I pray that God will continue to bless you and your family because you have definitely. Um, blessed me at times when I felt like I needed to quit and that I wanted to quit. Um, but she is definitely my mom at work. I got a mom at home. She said, no, honey, you can't quit. You got to keep on going. And and uh, she has me cracking up half the time, most of the time, but I appreciate her. And so, you know, when people have to say thank you, people have to know that you appreciate them because every day is not promised. You're here today, gone today in this day and age. And I just want to let her know I'll see you at work. In the next couple of days i just want to let her know that i love her i can always call her when i need her or text message her and she's my vanilla mommy so i got a chocolate <laughs> mom and a vanilla mom <laughs> so i love you mom chris thank you for <laughs> there you go i got moms in all colors y'all <laughs> but she loves the lord and um even all the things that you know even when she um hasn't been feeling very well she uplifts me and i uplift her like that anymore and when you go to work I'm very grateful uh, for Miss uh, Christine Gregory and her husband Mr. Chuck for being very loving people of God um, thinking about me on a daily basis my mom just made her a pound cake I said Lord have mercy my mom been making pound cakes and I can't lose none of this weight make a pound cake and red beans and rice and I think I smell I don't know, I smell something downstairs. I'm just getting the weight. Just slipping it. Praise the Lord. My God. Uh, I just want to let Danetta uh, Beard Washington know. I got you down. I'm writing everybody's names down. Uh, and I think I saw Michelle Barkley Gordon, I think. Yep, I'm putting your names down because I am definitely going to pray. Um, and um, Miss Washington, I don't know, are we related? You got some Washington in Columbus? Might be, you never know. So we'll be praying for you. I have a list that everybody that's come in um, that, well, I know it's backwards, y'all, but y'all can see it. I, yeah, I got people's names on here that I will be praying for. I'm um, just asking God to release in the atmosphere what is needed uh, for us in this time. Um, do you so have I, anything for, for Janetta Washington? I do. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. There is a lack of faith in, in your life right now. And I don't know what it is that you're going through. Keep the faith. God does not want you to let up on the things that you're praying for. Um, just keep the faith. You know, it seems like everything that you're walking into, it seems like there's a dead end road or there's people just trying to come in your way. And it just seems like, gosh, I can't get a break. And you're seeing everybody around you being blessed but you, even though that they're doing all the wrong things and you're doing all the right things. I've been there before. And I'm like, Lord, why? Why me? Why? And sometimes God says, why not you? Because he said it to me, why not you, Trina? 
I'm, I'm, I'm breaking you. I am actually breaking you so you can get through your breakthrough. And maybe that's what God is doing with you right now. But God is giving you strength. He really has. And the book of Nehemiah says, for the Lord, the Lord is your strength. And it is your strength. And you have to hold on to that strength. You have to hold on to it. So I will pray for you and ask God to give you that, that strength that, that abides within you. That's from generation to generation to generation. It's been taught to you. And it seems like you want to give up. Don't give up. Don't give in. You have people that are interceding like myself and others for you. There is something that is deep within you that God has for you. He does not want you to give up in this season. You're almost there. Oh, it kind of reminds me, you know, I got to do something funny real quick. Have you ever seen the Princess of the Frog? She says, almost there, almost there. Yeah, you're almost there. Almost there. I don't know where that came from. See, that's the musician in me. I just took a Disney song and almost there. Yeah, you're almost there. If you don't know the song, just pull up Princess and the Frog. It's on there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You're almost there. But I want to encourage you just to keep that strength. Even when you don't feel like it, this never feel like, and I don't know who this is for, this never feel like you just, you give, 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 just keep taking and taking and taking and taking. But you saying with the money that you giving them, they profiting with your money. And they profiting with everything that you giving. And it seems like, oh God, my life's are getting ready to get cut off. I know I'm going to pay my mortgage or my rent. See, I have something special for you too. But be ye wise in this season. Who to give to? Who not? Because you have some people that will be very deceitful and say, well, I need this and I need that. And they really don't. And they're taking advantage of you. Be careful of who you're sowing seeds to. Because you don't want the seed that you sow to people that becomes corrupt. Because they're trying to take advantage of you. I don't want that happening for anybody. I've been there before where I've given, shoot, I've given a whole bunch of money to some folks. And I've seen them somewhat prosper. And then they hit a dead, dead row in and just like, oh, okay, then they want to be my friend. But you know what? Tell you what, like this. I love people enough from a distance sometimes. And some of y'all need to love some people from a distance. Say, I forgive you. Hey, how you doing? Girl? What's up, homie? You don't know that? You need to kind of, you know, part ways. But still, when you see them, you know, speak and be, be good. But buddy, buddy, uh-uh, uh-uh. It's time for you to sow seeds into your own and to your own generation at this particular point because what's happening is you're giving away some things that God specifically had for you. If God had these things for you, why are you giving it away? Start at home. Charity begins at home is Fred Rod. God appreciates you giving, but sometimes the Lord says no. He's got three answers. No, yes, and wait. Some of, he, some of y'all, he's telling, no, don't do it. Because the person that you're putting into is not appreciating anything that you're doing for them. And they and they, and they they fake. There you go. They're fake. They're fake in this season. And Lord, please reveal anybody that is fake in this season. Reveal anybody that has yes. uh, the, the intentions of not wanting you to prosper. Let them be exposed. Even if they are really exposed, let God open up your eyes so that you may see that they're not for you. And I pray that God will re, uh, remove them and replace them with people that really love you. Really love the Lord. This is not the time. This is really not the time to be taken advantage of. Marshawn, I see Marshawn in there. He said, me too. You did. Yeah, well, see, you're one of those type of people, Marshawn. I've known you for a long time. You know what? It's time for you to prosper in the things that God wants for you. I know you personally. I know your heart. You are very loving, very giving. But this is the time where God is saying, stop for you. This is time for you to sow seeds into your own uh, your own area. Continue to give with your gifts, your musical gifts. God is going to manifest. He's going to expand what you are doing. It's time for you to stop giving to some folks that are really close to you right now. It's time for you to do what God wants you to do, with what he wants you to have. He wants you to have greater in this season. Marcia. He wants you to have greater. He needs for you to have greater. You've been putting yourself on the back burner for so long. He's very quiet spirit, Stephanie. He's very, very quiet spirit. He don't know. A few years ago, I had a, a friend of mine that was in the Lord. And she said, that's right. That's right. Very quiet. Yeah, it's time for you. To, it's, it's time for, for uh, to see the, the blessings of the Lord to be. I mean, you already have the blessings of the Lord. You really do. But this is time for, for God to say, okay, I need to
And it could be temporary, it could be permanent. Who knows? Gotta reveal it to you. But right now, he wants you to have some things that you've been praying for a long time. And the time is coming very, very soon. Just stay focused. Stay focused. It's gonna come to you. I think I see April on here. April Ricks, did I put your name down here? I didn't put your name down here. April, you have such a sweet spirit. I just feel like you just have a very sweet, sweet spirit about you. So April Ricks. And you got some people that just don't understand why you smile. Look like you're the type of person that just smiles all the time. No matter if you're mad at somebody. I, I don't know who you are. You just look like you just smile and it just warms people's hearts. Keep smiling, Sister April. Because you know what? A, a, a smile really go a long way to some folks. It really can. I see my dad smile all the time. He like, and I got his teeth too. Sister April, keep smiling. You know, I got his teeth. I got my, I got my mama's eyes, my dad's mouth structure. Yes, yeah, Sister April, keep smiling. You're smiling. You're smiling is healing. I'm putting her name down, April Ricks. Wow. We have some really, you know, we have a lot of giving people on this uh, live tonight. You say, can we make your way to Jacksonville, Florida? Yeah, when that storm passed. The storm is passing over. Storm is from Florida, yeah, that, 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 what is it, the Isaiah's, it ain't Isaiah's, whatever it is, I call it Isis, that ain't it either, but whatever kind of storm it is, we ask for it to pass on over, and it's supposed to be a hurricane by the time it hits the Carolinas, we pray for anybody that lives in the Carolina areas, in the Florida area, that that storm will be a tropical depression or whatever, uh, in the name of Jesus, because we're dealing with enough with this pandemic, so we praying for the storm passing over, yeah, we're going to pray, pray, pray God. I know I'm a little bit funny, y'all. I mean, I mean what I say, but I got a lot of my daddy in me too. You know, praise the Lord. Mm. Can Not I chime in on uh, April? <laughs> say it again. Can I chime in on the prophecy to April Ricks? Yeah, mine was just general. She just seems she's just smiling. That's, yeah, go ahead. Uh, April, I hear the Lord say uh, the last two months in this season, you faced a lot of opposition. Um, but I hear the Lord say you're stepping out of a season of opposition and you're stepping into your winning season. Uh, your faithfulness has brought you thus far. I hear the Lord say to piggyback off of what Trina already prophesied, continue to be faithful, continue to smile, continue to do all that God's calling you to do because greater is coming, better is coming. Your labor is not in vain. Your smile is not in vain. With your seeds, you got seeds of time and sowing time to help others in the ground. And I hear the Lord say, within the next three months, your seeds are getting ready to manifest. You're going to witness those things manifest in your life. Yeah. Michelle Allison says she was very grateful for this. Uh, she needs to hear this uh, live. Michelle Allison, yes, I wrote your name down. You just never know who you're encouraging or you're, who you're uplifting. And I just believe everybody that's on here, whether you're saying something or not, I pray that God will bless all of you and keep you safe from this coronavirus. Um, a little health care advice real quick. What they don't tell you on TV, because they always say fear, not fa uh, um, facts, not fear. It's really t technically fear. They want you to be fear, but God has not given us the spirit of fear, but out of love, the power of the sound mind. Amen. Um, I tell people this at too. too. Um, yes, I mean, it's nice for us to, to uh, cover our mouths and things of that nature, you know, with the mask and things. But uh, just to let you know a little bit about the coronavirus, um, a virus is not bacteria. There's a big difference between a virus and bacteria. Um, a virus is like, um, it doesn't mutate, but it needs a host. And that host that it needs is mucus. And how do we get mucus? We get mucus by drinking dairy products or eating things dairy or drinking alcohol. Believe it or not, white bread causes mucus. You can actually Google this and pull this up on whether B, Mayo Clinic. You can even Google it. If you eliminate the mucus in your body, guess what? You won't have to worry about getting coronavirus. Why? Because of the simple fact that Viruses need a host. That host is mucus, ladies and gentlemen, just like a common cold. What happens when you get a cold? You get the stuffies and the mucus. There you go. But this is the stuff that they're not telling you. Everything doesn't need a vaccination, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes it's just general stuff. So that's the blessing tonight that I want to share with you guys. Sorry, my nose was itching. I wasn't digging it. It was itching. Um, 
praise you God. But I would have dug up my notes. But uh, make sure, like, yes, definitely keep the social distancing, uh, wear your mask. But you know how back in the old days, you know, um, even today, my mom said, let me fix you a pot of greens, some collard greens, anything green, collards, kale, mustard, spinach, um, broccoli, anything green is an accident. Guess what? That, that um, breaks up mucus. Guess what? Can't get coronavirus or the influenza, which is also a virus, or the flu, which is also a virus, or pneumonia, which is also a virus. And y'all get what I'm saying? You see how God has given me this knowledge to give to y'all? Everything don't need a vaccination, ladies and gentlemen, because the pharmaceutical companies need, are, need us to be sick in order to make money off of this. Let me say it one more time. The pharmaceutical companies need us to stay sick in order to make money off of us. How do they make money off of us? We get sick. How do we stay sick? Because we're eating all this stuff that has processed stuff in it. Read some of these ingredients. Titanium phosphate, which is found in some of your cereals, is paint thinner, ladies and gentlemen. Paint thinner. But they allow it to be put in your food. I'm just teaching y'all some stuff. I'm just letting y'all know. Titanium phosphate. Then you got that high uh, fructose corn syrup. That sugar. Processed sugar. <clears throat> Have you ever noticed that some things taste a little differently than others and it's not really, you know, have to be honest because, you know, I'm so, our people perish because of what? A lack of knowledge, a lack of wisdom. Somebody breaks up mucus in your body. You'll stay to the point to where, you know, you cover yourself because you got other folks in the north. So AIDS is even a virus, you guys. Pull this stuff up. I cannot lie to you. But hey, you know, I'm just letting you know. Pharmaceutical companies need for you to stay sick. That's why half of us are being holistic or going vegan or, you know, there's a lot of chemicals that are in our food, so we have to be careful. Look at that, that Xanthan gum, high fructose, uh, fructose corn syrup, uh, phosphate, titanium phosphate, titanium sulfate, anything with ATE in it or uh, uh, amium, but yeah. You are not going to become a guinea pig in this season to be tested on it. Talk about, yeah, we want to test the, vir uh, the virus thing. No. Eat your greens, y'all. There you go. That's excellent. That's a little help thing for y'all on today. I hope I bless somebody today because that's really true. They're not going to teach us this stuff. I mean, they do teach us this stuff in school, but um, they don't emphasize it. So I kind of go a little further <laughs> with it. But I want, to, I want our bodies, I want our temples to be clean. I want it to be whole, you know, because this too shall pass. Now, here it is. It was, it's been, what, 100 years since we've had uh, a pandemic. We had the Spanish flu. But we didn't have technology and all the things that we have, you know, that we do now. But come on now. You know, our grandmamas used to say, honey, a pot of greens and you'll be just fine. Guess what? My mom, I really honestly believe, to be honest with you, Stephanie, I think I may have had COVID at the beginning of January before it even came because I don't think it was, uh, it, they, they tested me. They did the nasal pharyngeal swab where they put it up your nose and, you're like, Ugh, and your eyes start crying and all that. Um, it tested out as influenza A. Now, I have, ne I have not had the flu since I was 16. I'm 46 now, y'all. So I just turned 46 in June. So for me to go without the flu for 30 years, that's a pretty good immune system. But it was something like I, I didn't cough. It wasn't a lot of coughing, Stephanie. I just felt like I got ran over by a truck. And I was down for about a good week and a half. And my mama was sick and some other stuff. It was not the flu. So I really think I might have had COVID at the beginning of the year. But moving forward, y'all, eat your greens. Right. Back in the day, you know, when they didn't have doctors and they knew that babies was born. I shop at Whole Foods. I love it's expensive, but it's all good. Now I eat my mama's food now. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I ain't never got sick off of my mama's food. And I'm doing quite all right. I'm got the well, I almost had a little muscle. I ain't got muscle right now. It's more like this is red beans and rice. Praise you God. Oh, eat, your eat those grains and thank you shannon yes i turned 46 june 14th so i'll praise and thank you god but uh, yeah eat the grains y'all i'm telling y'all a lot better eat your grains and drink a lot of water but um yeah i thought i would share that uh stephanie because a lot of people are just like man when's this going to be over 
Uh, I mean, social distancing is that. But I'm like this. Let's just be honest, y'all. I mean, we should have probably. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a uh, larger strain. It's a, you know, a bigger strain. Uh, stronger strain. That's what I meant to say. So eat your greens and then pray. And then pray you don't get it. Uh, my boyfriend had it. Um, he ended up having it. And he lost his mother uh, and a couple of other family members. So this thing is real. This, this, is, this is really real. This is a very real situation. But I guarantee you, well, like I said, you know, everything doesn't need a vaccination. Just eat your greens. And stay up on your um, your vitamins. Build up your immune system. If I may suggest, get some elderberry. Vitamin C is great. Elderberry is even better. I'm teaching saints tonight, y'all. Hallelujah. Praise God. From whom all blessings flow. Praise God. From whom all blessings flow. Praise him on. Jesus, here below. That's not a good mic. Praise God. And hope he goes to life on Yes! <laughs> hope y'all like what I said. Because it works. Uh, ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it works. The blood still works and elderberry works. Amen. Y'all got anything y'all want to ask me tonight? Since I done did all this talking and prophesying, not prophesying. We don't prophesy. We prophesy. Praise the Lord and encourage. I encourage y'all to go forth and be happy in Jesus. It's getting dark in here. Let me turn on a light or something up in here. <laughs> and there was light. Yay! <laughs> I want to thank you so much. You are hilarious. I want to thank, thank you, you so much. I'm honored that you were able to grace us with your presence. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in the comments, I have um, included her website and her cash app. Let's be a blessing. If she was a blessing to you guys, let's let's bless her tonight. Let's cash app. I know, sis, I said, well, let's split. We're not splitting up. We're just giving it all to you, sis. Whatever the Lord, if the Lord tells you to give whatever, let's go ahead and be a blessing. I uh, Thank you guys so much. Uh, join us again next week for Monday Mana at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, Trina, uh, could you give us the benediction and the closing prayer and any, any other closing thoughts or anything else that the Lord might give you for us tonight? Uh my friend, my bestie Dominic White from Exmoor, Virginia has, has got on here and I wanted to say hello to him I wanted to share something real quick it's amazing how sometimes people can get so jealous of your friendships that some people that are jealous of your friendships and your connections will try to disconnect and there was a time that me and Dominic weren't talking because the enemy was jealous of our relationship but we reconciled because the enemy is alive so I just want to give a shout out to my poogaboo. That's what I call him. Don't nobody else call him that, but I do. Dominic Doriel White of Exmoor, Virginia, who really stood by my side through um, thick and thin. Actually, I met I met him right before I met you. I met him, and then I met you, Stephanie. Wow. So I met him online when we had Learn Gospel Music. I don't know if you remember that forum, but that yeah. So I met I met Dominic Doriel White on. Uh, learngospelmusic.com and um, we had been friends all that time. What was that, 2009? I think we were talking about that the other day. But he has been there for me even when I moved to Virginia and um, he was there with me um, in Virginia and even to this day he is just, he's my puka puka. He's my little teddy bear. Yeah, I know he's blushing. He's too dark to blush, y'all. But anyway, um, yeah, we love you, Dominic. 2007 has it been that long. I'm that young, huh? Mm, imagine that. Praise the Lord. But I wanted to give him a shout out because I did see him on here. Stephanie, I want to thank God for you. I want to thank God for just how God has really truly um, matured you spiritually from the time that I met you when you really didn't know what your calling was to growing into your calling and maturing into your calling, and even how God has given you even the man of God that even. Um, uh, loves who you are. He loves you outside of the prophetic realm, but embraces your prophetic anointing. Yeah. And I thank God for you and your husband and your baby because he ain't a baby. What well, he grown now? How old is he now? Eleven. Eleven. Judas. 
I need to hurry up then. Well, if Sarah can have a baby, I can too, but I ain't that old. I'm, I still got, yeah, praise the Lord. I still got some time. Praise him. If it, if it be promised, praise the Lord. It's going to happen. If not, it's all good. But uh, 11 years old, praise him. But I thank God for you and your husband uh, for being such um, a force in my life, praying for me, even when I don't even know that y'all praying, but I know that you are because things keep happening. I'm like, here, here, here. It keeps happening for me. And I know all the things I want to I want to thing that God is giving to you in this season. If it's not happening, it's going to continue. It's going to happen. And then when it does happen, it will keep happening. You're like, oh my God, Lord, what is going on? You say, it keeps happening for you. It keeps happening for me. Right now, I'm in the, I, I was in a dry season and I didn't know what God was doing. I'm like, Lord, I see everybody getting blessed but me. Now it's happening for me because I just sat back and I just waited on God to do what I needed him to do. Here it is. It keeps happening for me. So that's what I'm going to leave y'all uh, on tonight. It's going to happen for you. Let me leave a word with you on today. Um, uh, let me see here. I had to pull up my Bible because there were so many scriptures I had. But you know what? There's one that I know by heart. And this is part of, oh, I also want to give a shout out. I saw some of my uh, sorority sisters from Theta Phi Sigma Christian Sorority uh, being incorporated. And we are Christian sorority. Um, give, um, for instance, hopefully, um, I had to hook you up with our founder, um, Dr. Prophetess uh, Jessica Cole, wonderful woman of God, and um, has an vision. And we have. A, a scripture in our sorority and everybody should know Isaiah 40 31 but they I gotta say it like my mom but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength I gotta preach it they shall mount up with wings as eagles so you can't you can't say it any okay but they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint <laughs> That is, you can't say that in your own kind of way. That's how y'all say y'all y'all scriptures on today. So I just thank God for all of y'all that are on here. Take that Isaiah forty thirty one, Isaiah chapter forty thirty one, the King James version. I'm praying that you guys have strength this season. And I thank God for all of you that are on here. I pray that God will continue to keep keep you and to protect you, protect your household, protect your finances. I'm praying that God will give you more income than outcome. I pray that God will give you more connections and then um, make sure those, those disconnections happen in this. God will give you a clear mind and give you peace. That's what we all understand. I pray that God will give you peace even when you sleep at night, that all your worries and all your troubles that you lay aside every weight, give them over to the Lord. Those are my final thoughts. I love everybody on here tonight. I was just excited that I was on here. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for being my sister. Yeah. Thank you, a true one. She ain't fake, y'all. She has never been fake to me. And if I'm wrong, she's gonna tell me I'm wrong, and then I'm gonna love you anyway. But you, this is why it's wrong. You need to go this way. I love her for that. And I thank God for what she's doing here. And I pray that her numbers will expand as she continues to do Monday Man on it. And I sit there and watch it. And I pray that you will have like not just double numbers, but triple numbers. So you go into the hundreds and then start going into the thousands because people need to hear a ram of word in this time and in this season. God bless you. Thank you so much for having me on on this evening. Yes, I love you. Thanks again so much. And I almost forgot to say the sinner's prayer. If you're listening to this and you don't know Jesus as your personal savior and you want to, or you want to rededicate your life, repeat after me, say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of all of my sins. I believe you died on the cross and rose again. Please come into my heart. Thanks for coming in. If you pray that prayer, please inbox me so I can get some material to you. Trina, Trin, my sister, Trina Washington, thank you guys so much for coming on this show. Thank you guys for listening. This is Stephanie and Trina Trin here with Monday Manna. I'll see y'all next week at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be blessed.